Good morning, fellow saints. Um, recently, I I kind of keep up with the evolutionist and creationist uh, arguments because I want to know whether um, evolution is a plausible and biblical uh, idea. For instance, the Bible affirms a few things for certain. It says that God created everything. There was nothing that was before and he created it. Um, and then it also says that he took from what he had created and created other things. Um, it also says that he took six days to do this when he could have done it instantaneously. So it makes me wonder if he did use some form of evolution for the lower creatures. Um, we know the Bible affirms that that man was created special. Um, he was not evolved in any way. It says that God took him from the dust and formed him, uh, and then breathed the Spirit of God into him. So we know that man is a special creation um, that didn't come from any of the other um, animals for certain. Um, that's not necessarily to say that the lower creatures didn't um, have some form of evolution uh, during some of the days. Um, now, I'm not saying that I agree with evolution. I'm just saying I'm, will, I'm open to the possibility that we do not have full knowledge when it comes to the evolutionary debate. And this goes for evolutionists, too. Um, we do not have full knowledge on either spectrum, and the creationist spectrum or the evolutionist spectrum. It really doesn't matter. But moving on, uh, lately... And this is kind of irritating for me um, because I hate logical fallacies so much. Lately, evolutionists are pulling a straw man fallacy. Uh, basically, what they say is when a creationist says everything must have a cause, so, there, so therefore God is the cause, the ultimate cause. And then they, of course, get their rebuttal. Well, then God must have a cause. Which I see what they're saying, but this is a straw man fallacy that ignores the very argument, and therefore it's not a valid argument. It's not that I believe that anything that has a logical fallacy is a fallacy. I mean, is is uh, irrelevant, but in this case it is because it's ignoring the very definition of what we're saying. What we affirm is that God is His character. His very character is defined as a God who never changes, a God who has always been, eternally existent. Um, we're not trying to attribute human attributes to him, characteristics. For instance, uh, we learn. We learn things. Throughout time, we progress in certain areas and fall backwards in other areas, and we change our beliefs and whatnot. God's not like that. The definition of God is that God is never changing, that he never learns, that he never grows older, he's outside of time, although he works inside of time. Um, his very name uh, is a verb meaning, or at least related to, um, I am. His very name spells out his eternity. He is. He didn't have a beginning, he, didn't, he didn't, won't have an end. He always will be, he's always the same. It's part of his character, it's the definition of a main part of what makes God God. Um, the fact that he's not bound to the human uh, reasonings, the human understandings, the human uh, morality, uh, not morality, uh, mortality. Um, that's part of the thing that makes him God. So to write off this argument simply by saying, surely he must have a cause, that's ignoring the very definition. You know, um, for instance, I'm a homo sapien. Um, by definition, I am a homo sapien. You cannot say that I am a fish because I don't have any of the characteristics of a fish. It's the exact same thing. Like we can't say that God attribute things to God that we're not defining God as. That would simply be a powerful human. That wouldn't be a God. So it's important to realize that God is set apart. Um let me check my notes here. I think one of the clear reasons why evolutionists feel the need to overlook this definition is because 
if that is true, if God truly is someone who doesn't change and is eternal, then there is no rebuttal against that. He would have had to been the cause. Um, because that would mean by definition that he, regardless of whether you believe that he's Allah or Yahweh or that he's just some divine force or that he's just like, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Regardless of your view of God, it would have to be that he um, was the ultimate creator. Um, so really for the argument of against creationism, um, you really have to deny that definition of God. Um, but yeah, I mean, if there's any evolutionists watching this, don't stoop to the same level that you hate creationists for. Yeah, I mean, one thing I always hear in the evolutionist debate is creationists, they always mis misrepresent the view and everything. Well, that's great, and it, it probably is true in many, many scenarios. So don't stoop down to the same uh, actions that you hate on the creationists for. It doesn't really make sense to me. Um, uh, and, 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 and to the saints who are watching this, realize that your arguments will not save someone only god can sometimes he will utilize your argument and it's good that you know your apologetics know why you believe something uh, not only for your own benefit but also um as paul writes so that you may save those who are your hearers when you hold fast your theology um but ultimately it is only by the work of god that one is saved not by the work of speech um and so it's important that we keep in mind the role of the Holy Spirit in enlightening someone so that they can believe and accept Christ. Um, also, realize that there will always be an element of faith because a decision cannot exist in a vacuum. God will never completely affirm who he is until the second coming because there would be no element of faith. It's like in the Garden of Eden. She could not have asked them to obey if there was nothing to disobey on. Therefore, the fruit was in a way necessary um, in man's free will to give them the opportunity to obey. See what I'm saying? Man was created with a certain element of free will. God did not force man to eat the fruit. Uh, nor did he remove grace so that he would be forced to. Nor did he, see what I'm saying? That, that, that didn't happen. What happened is that God gave man a, a clear opportunity to either obey or disobey, and man chose to disobey. It was not that man did not have the power to, um, to choose God over sin. It's that he did not desire God over sin. He was tricked by the, by the lies of the serpent. Um, I realize that when you look at your evidence for God, that's the exact same evidence that the evolutionist looks at for creationism. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, for evolution. Sorry, I'm mixed up there. It's the exact same evidence that both sides use. You know, um, like the like the the primeval man or whatever. Evolutionists claim that that's their big one of their big you know links or whatever. Um, whereas many creationists view the exact same um, evidence and see evidence for their their god. Or a, a big creationist um, debate is the 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 DNA, uh, because it's so complex and everything that surely there had to have been a divine being behind it. Um, and evolutionists would look at that as just, well, look how nature works to correct and work out problems, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you're looking at the exact same evidence, um, which brings me to my next, to my next point. Remember, and with that in mind, remember that there is always that element of faith. You can't, ultimately, if someone chooses to believe in God, it's going to be an element of faith. It's not like the sun. You know, let's say God required that you believe in the sun to be saved. Well, there's no faith there. You can walk outside and see that there is a sun. You can see the effects of the sun by the plants growing and the fruit that they produce, etc., 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 you don't have to have faith that there is a sun. And because of that, because of 
the need for an opportunity to believe, there will always be that element of faith. Um, so if you're looking for an absolute affirmation that the, that the Bible is the final authority, you're probably not going to find it. If you're looking for an absolute affirmation that God, Yahweh, is God, that he exists, and that he did, in fact, create everything, you're probably not going to find that either because it would remove the possibility to not believe. For instance, the Pharisees in the, in the Gospels asked of Jesus, they said, show us a sign. Show us something to prove absolutely that you are the Messiah. And he said, this wicked generation asked for a sign, but they weren't, they're not going to receive it any. All, of, all that I'm going to do is give them the sign of, of Jonah, with the three days in the, in the well relating to his three days in, uh, in death. Um, and in fact, he said that if someone didn't believe the law and the prophets, even if someone were to be raised from the dead, they wouldn't believe. And in the same way, Christ was raised from the dead, and he also raised a man named Lazarus out of the, out of the dead, and they still didn't believe in him. So with that being said, we can know that there will always be people who choose not to believe, and there will always be people who choose to believe. It's important that we don't get wrapped up in everyone who doesn't believe. Um, not that we shouldn't love them, but we shouldn't be discouraged by that. Instead, we should try to instead we should try to witness to as many as possible because we don't know who will be saved. I hope that makes sense. Um, it is important to note that the Bible says these are these things not believing in God or distrusting in the Bible or whatever. These things have been around for for as long as people have been around, you know. Uh, the Bible says that after the fall, um, that man's thoughts were constantly on evil. Um, we are a fallen people. Our conscience is scarred. We don't. We can't fully understand all things, and not only that, but we're not God. So there's this element of depravity where our minds cannot comprehend grace fully and only by the work of the Holy Spirit can we even accept grace because otherwise our minds and our and our flesh are so tr tilted towards evil that we cannot of ourselves pick salvation. Romans says that while we were still in our sins, keep in mind we didn't do anything to receive, we were still in our sins, we didn't even ask God, he gave Christ. Um, keep in mind also that God knew ultimately what was going to happen, that we were going to betray him, and that he still um, still showed that grace. Um, I say this to point out the fact that, that we are evil people. Mankind is overall evil. We do good things on occasion, but ultimately our minds are inclined towards evil, not towards God. Think about uh, men. Think about sex. Your mind is, is constantly on sex. You look at porn. You turn to homosexuality. You have sex outside of marriage. You, uh, you lust after pe people, man or woman, in your heart. These are things that, that are natural to you because you are living according to the flesh, not according to the spirit. The only way to live according to the spirit is when Christ imputes his righteousness to you and renews your conscience, conscience through the Holy Spirit and regenerates you to where you have the evidence of good works. Um, in fact, the Bible says that only a, fool says, says there, uh, only a fool says in his heart there is no God because of the evidence of the conscience and the evidence of nature. However, this evidence is not conclusive enough or, mm, for lack of better wording, um, it's not extensive, maybe that's the right word, extensive enough to absolutely affirm your salvation. The only way to salvation is through the special revelation of Christ in the Bible. Um, but still, nevertheless, uh, the sinner's conscience still affirms even the basics of what is right or wrong. If someone goes and 
gets uh, a, a newborn kitty and tortures it and then lights it on fire and kills it. Well, they're going to know, at least for the most part, that that's wrong. Because the conscience is still still workable, even though it is scarred um, and not fully at its full potential. Um, so the Bible does affirm that only a fool would say that there is no God in his heart because it's so obvious that there must be a God. Logic and reason stands to prove that there is a God. Um, and then if we, are, we, if we realize the definition of who God is, we realize that he had to have been the cause and that he could not have had a cause by definition. Um, and Romans, in Romans, Paul writes that um, the evidence of God is in the conscience, even though, okay, yeah, I already said that. Uh, Peter also writes that ignorant and unstable people twist the scriptures. Keep in mind that Peter was writing this before 100 AD. In the first 100 years between 0 and 180, 100 AD, there were already problems of people twisting the scriptures. And we know that there were more than likely problems before. And people have always been inclined towards evil. So if man has been twisting scriptures for that long, how much more can we expect now? Um, keep in mind that humanity is not increasing in morality. We may be increasing in technology and stuff like that, but as far as morality and spirituality, we're on the decline. Um, and as long as we choose selfishness over God's ways, we will continue this downward spiral. Um, so, but Christians, one last one notice about this. Um, find out what you believe and why, but don't lose sight of your witness. Don't get so wrapped up in the argument that you forget to live Christianity. James says that true religion is, you know, uh, uh, benefiting the the widows and the orphans that is a true religion a religion that is acted out not just a religion in practice that's the same thing that the catholics fell fell prey to um before the reformation they become they became corrupted and uh, uh different key leaders were involved with this corruption and then and then as time went on uh they fell to that And they, and they lost their witness in large part. So don't hold the world, I guess is what I'm getting at, don't hold the world to your standard, standards or your beliefs. To be saved, you have to, believe in the, you have to believe in Christ and repent from your sins. But to be of the world, you don't have to do such things. If you reject Christ, you're rejecting your only opportunity to be saved. And therefore, you're not required to live by the same, by the same rules as we are. Therefore, as Christians, we shouldn't expect them to. They're not saved. They're not of the body. Um, so why, why, do, why do non-Christians affirm um, abortion? Because they don't have a value for life. And the, and the value for life that they do have is scarred because their consciences are scarred. So therefore, us who have been renewed and regenerated by the Holy Spirit, we can't possibly expect them to come to the same understanding. So when people of the world believe in evolution... Do not let that 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 arrogance, I guess you could say, bring you down. I mean, there will always be that element of faith. And so don't get yourself so wrapped up in the argument that you forget instead of winning the argument, you're supposed to be winning the soul. You know, be willing to take a bullet for the team, basically. Be willing to accept that not everybody will accept your message. Um Okay, so basically, just in conclusion, I was I was addressing the issue of of evolution and how it kind of relates to um, creationism and how as Christians it's important that we realize that there is no absolute reason for faith. There is no final reason for faith. There's always that element of choosing. Now, we who have been renewed and regenerated, we can see the evidence clearly, and we can say, okay, yes, this affirms that. And now that we have our minds purified by, by, by the Lord, we can say, okay, uh, this is proof of God. But for someone who has that scarred mindset and who twists scriptures and who has a scarred conscience and who is not bound by the law, for that, that kind of a person, it is a perfectly reasonable and logical explanation for them. 
because they have excluded the possibility of God. Um, well, I hope that this video caused some some clarification and helped uh, in your faith and in the way that you go. So uh, God bless. Have a great uh, summer.